man, did I just run past straight away? It certainly looks so something. I need to go double check. They've literally have just come off that little dirt boat ramp. Good morning everyone, it's Dan here and I am heading to Bunaloo East. We're looking today for a gentleman by the name of Ian Gray. He was 66 years old when he went missing on the 11th of September 2015. Now he left his sheep farm, he was a well-known sheep farmer in the area and he was in a white Holden Ute uh, 2006 model and the rego number was Alpha Golf 46 Alpha Juliet and it had a very distinctive stock crate on the back of the ute. Now this was a bit strange. Now this gentleman he went missing when um, he left his phone, he left his wallet at home but the family believes he still had $3,000 on him. Um, for what that is, I'm not sure. I've reached out to the family and have asked them to give me a call back. So, down near Bunaloo, it's a little bit far from the Murray River, but that's the largest river around. Now, there's lots of houseboats and it's a, it's a big river. And so, what and we're going to do is spend the next couple of days searching for Ian and around that area, looking out for this ute. Hopefully, we'll be able to hear from the family and we'll get a little bit more information. Uh, daughter's name is Sarah, son's name is Paul, and his wife's name's Helen. Uh, he waved to his family as he went out the driveway and was never seen since. And that was back in 2015. So we're going to head, we're just leaving Bathurst now, and we are heading to Bonaloo down on the New South Wales Victoria border. Uh, let's go see if we can find young Ian. Unfortunately, we had a few drums this morning, as we usually do. Went to go set, packed up, ready to go, leave the farm, and the truck had flat batteries. Awesome. So then it took me about four hours to charge up new batteries, had to go to town to get some new, replace the old batteries to get us back on the road. So we're coming up to Blaney now, but we're about, oh, could be four or five hours behind schedule. Had hoped to get down to Murray River with enough time to do some, at least start the searching tonight. But we'll get up early and we'll hook in and start searching tomorrow. So we just entered Bunaloo. Re entered Bunaloo. Go up to this irrigation channel. Just have a bit of a look at how big it is. It's a bit, it's tiny. Tiny. Oh yeah. Let's get out and have a look. 
it's just too dark to see anything at the moment. Sun's coming up. We'll give it a little while and then we'll come and have a proper look. Throw the sonar ball in. Give it an indication of just how deep these are. It might be a matter of um putting the little kayak in if we need to if it's deep enough so i've just looked up the specifications for the 2006 holden rodeo ute they range from um, 1630 to 1750 millimeters so that's 1.75 meters so we're going to need at least two meters of water uh, it's very dirty dark water so one would imagine it wouldn't take much less than that so two two and a half meters you could easily hide this vehicle so we're going to once the sun comes up a bit more we'll throw the sonar ball in and throw the drone up and just see how deep this main channel is on the edge of the town so this is our largest closest body of water all these irrigation channels there's a lot of little feeder ones um, and they look tiny tiny not wide enough whereas the one i'm just right next to is uh, certainly wide enough uh, it looks deep enough but until i put the sonar ball in i really don't know i'm gonna need at least two meters at the very least <laughs> Struggling Cause the smoke stopped hurting my lungs And the drink stopped burning my tongue It's true I guess I'm numb now that I'm a stranger to you So this is the main irrigation channel I don't reckon it's going to be very deep at all But we'll throw the sonar ball in and have a look Just throw in a couple more spots just to be absolute certain. You go on the other side. side on the road just to make sure the depth's consistent on both sides Again, only 1.5 meters deep. Not deep enough for a car. All right. Well, I just stopped into the local petrol station just to chat to a couple of the locals and found a lot of good information. Oh. When you look on uh, Google Maps, yeah, you've got the Edwards River. Yeah. You've got Mathara, which is only. Uh, 20 minutes that way. Okay. Which is the Edwards and the Murray which join together. Let me just write that down. Oh. There's a fair, fair few rivers around here, which... Yeah, my, Depending on which direction you're headed. Yeah, how deep are they? Uh, they're pretty deep. And they got boat ramps, or...? Uh, well, the Murray, the Edwards is quite deep. That's Deneliquin. Yep. That's half an hour north. Let me just pump, put it in the map now, so I can have a look at it. What was that other place you said? Sorry? What was the other place you said? You got Mathara. Oh. Let me jump out, mate. I'm not in the way here yeah. with all the crowd. Yeah. Righto, so we've got Mathara. That's got a river and a boat ramp, so we're going to try and head there. But we're just going to stop off at the picnic point, it's called. So, go have a 
have a look at that one. It looks pretty shallow, but these guys reckon there's a boat ramp there. So, we'll go have a look. Okay, let's go see if we can find this property. See, belt's on, as always. Well, that was some really good information. So we've got a couple more search areas. It is very, it's impossible for them to be in one of these channels. They're just not big enough. Oh, I shouldn't have gone through the mud. That seems a little bit soft there. Lucky we're in a four wheel drive. I just spoke to the current owner of the property who brought it from the family a year after the um, Ian went missing and it was actually on the market for sale well before he went missing so 1400 acres more sheep land now he's growing canola and wheat but yeah the police did come back Apparently the two brothers of Ian had in their mind that he was buried somewhere on the property. But again, I don't know how, why, or what reason someone would do that to him. Okay, off to the next spot. Okay, so we are now about to head down Picnic Point Road. Road. There's a boat ramp. Even the sign says there's a boat ramp. Okay, Murray and Edwards River. Let's go see what's down there. So this is where the locals said is the closest, closest deep river. And the Edwards River joins onto on to the Murray River. This is bright thing in the sky called. Visitor and recreation area. Too shallow. You can see plenty of trees in it. There's no way there's a car in there. Uh, 
this part of the river is very dry. You go further down to Yukachuka. Find some deep water. gentleman at the caravan park said this is the way to a boat ramp that accesses the Murray there's so many different spots along the Murray where you could put a vehicle in if you were so minded Did I just find a car straight away? It certainly looks so like something. I need to go double check. They've literally have just come off that little dirt boat ramp. So this end of the river is actually a lot lower than I thought. It's only like 1.3 meters and I'm in the center, hanging downstream towards Yuchuka beautiful spot but to be thorough we'll go all the way down because anywhere along here there's all bush tracks and he was in a four Ian was in a four drive could have easily got into any of these spots and there might be a eddy or a hole on the corners so to me need to be thorough and check it all two meters deep it just went So for those who are wondering how the sonar works, we've got three types of sonar at the moment that we're using. We've got live scan. So that is exactly what is underneath the boat right there. So you've got what's called a transducer that picks up the signal. And that's what that bar is there. That's the transducer for the live. And that's where that is there. You've also got the down scan. So that top layer there is dark and that is the bottom so you can see it's like a little undulating kind of stuff on there the top one there is our side scan the dark column is the water column and then we're measuring out 20 meters on the left 20 meters on the right which is plenty for this river so we're able to scan the whole river in one go so we are heading downstream and um, once we've cleared as far as we can go, uh, we should be hopefully make it to Yachuka and then we'll head back. Sulphur Crested Top Twos. Always love the rivers. All these trees have uh, hollows out in them and that's where they nest along with all the other birds. So we're still only 1.8, 1.7 metres deep here. So we'll just keep an eye on it. So on this corner it started to drop down a little bit deeper. We're down to 2.7 metres. So that's getting much deeper to where we want. You can see the water starting to pick up, so it might get shallow again. But this is a hole right here on the corner where it's caved out. So this is where you expect to see something. A few logs, but that's about it at the moment.
And one thing about this river is there's lots of debris. Um, you can see so many trees have been washed in with all these big eucalyptus forests along the edge of the water. So we've got to pay extra attention when it gets deep enough. Make sure there's not a vehicle hiding under a log or a twenty. Another hole here. It's a bit of a strange object there. I'm coming back and double check over that. 3.4 meters. 3.2 meters. 3.5 meters. Much deeper section now. Lots of logs. Almost every bend of the river, it drops down yeah, to 2.8 at the moment, 2.7. Just as the water curls around the river, it rips out the soil down to 3 metres now. Just the right depth for what we're looking at, 3.2, 3.4 in these corners. any other part of the river really you never know big deep hole just on the edge of that hole is the camping area people can easily get their four drives down here I've washed into that hole you could be sitting there but we have cleared it, so we know there's no vehicles in there. Very confident. Let's just show you the same item on different screens. That's a stick, and that's the same stick there. So the more time I spend on the river, the better I get at identifying objects. I'm really loving this little setup I've got now. It's perfect just for one person. We weren't learnt the hard way with Bill. It was just too small for the two of us. But for one, in little rivers like this, it's absolutely perfect. Absolutely love it. That's another access point down to the river here. And we're looking at 4.6 meters deep. drop off now it's coming back up again but again these corners just get washed out and they end up with these big deep holes kind of wishing I brought a jumper it wasn't quick enough on the camera but that was a six meter hole Right there, that big eddy shows the power of the water.
Okay, we've done about 10 miles, so 15 kilometers of searching the river. And now we're gonna head back to the truck and pack up and then drive the truck further down the river and continue searching. So, it's getting the end of the day. I've come to this boat ramp in Pachuca. Looks like a good boat ramp, doesn't it? It is only 0.6 of a metre all the way out there. There is no way there is a car up this boat. Oh, it's another one cleared off. If you have any information about Ian Gray, please leave a comment. I will reach out to the local police ideas of where we might be able to search or if you've seen him or had seen him please leave a comment don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you on the next hunt good morning everyone it's dan here and we are heading now further south to tasmania we're getting on the boat tonight and we're going to continue our search for nicola solis now, uh, after our last video, we actually had someone reach out and claim that they saw Nicola at a uh, like a tip recycling shop on the day that he went missing. So it's in an area where we haven't searched yet. So there may be nothing come out of it, but we're going to head down there and continue the search for Nicola's release. Stay tuned, guys.